Hello there, I'm Sophia, 34 years old. Recently, I found some quiet moments and thought it would be a good idea to share my journey of standing up to my overbearing ex-husband. Let's dive into the story of my ex, Charles. Our paths crossed shortly after my college graduation at a party hosted by a mutual friend. Instantly, we clicked and started dating. After four blissful years, we felt certain about our bond and got married. My relationship with Charles was always a source of comfort. He was attentive and always prioritized my happiness, which made me overlook the financial dynamics in our marriage. Despite Charles working a regular job, his income was less than mine. Moreover, he ambitiously bought a house, leading to a hefty mortgage and additional bills. Wanting to support him, I willingly took on our financial burdens. Our married life took a significant turn when I became pregnant about a year in. Though unexpected, we welcomed the news and eight months later were blessed with our daughter, Julie. However, Charles's demeanor shifted drastically after Julie's arrival. He insisted I quit my job to focus on Julie, a suggestion I reluctantly accepted for the sake of our daughter's early years. Despite the initial joy of bonding with Julie, Charles's expectations at home became unreasonable. He demanded a spotless house and timely meals, disregarding the immense effort of caring for a newborn. My attempts to meet these demands amidst exhaustion often fell short, triggering Charles's temper. At first, I defended my role as a parent, emphasizing the workload it entailed, especially as Charles never participated in caring for Julie, leaving me to manage nighttime feedings alone while he rested. This is the tale of how I navigated through these challenges, reclaiming my voice and space against Charles's unreasonable demands. After enduring Charles's outbursts for over a year since Julie's arrival, I reached a point where I knew I had to make a change. During that first year, we faced a lot of financial strain, but thankfully, I had savings to lean on. However, dipping into my savings wasn't a long-term solution, and I felt the pressing need to contribute more actively to our financial stability. One evening, after Charles came home from a particularly long day, I decided it was time to have a crucial conversation. I gently initiated the talk. I've been doing some thinking, and there's something important I need to discuss with you. Can we talk? Charles, weary from work, agreed, but asked me to keep it brief. I shared my thoughts on returning to work, emphasizing how it's been a year since we welcomed Julie, and it felt right to start contributing financially again. To my surprise, Charles took my suggestion poorly, asserting that it wasn't my place to make such decisions independently. He worried about how my returning to work might reflect on him, fearing it would signal to others that he was unable to provide for us. I couldn't understand why he was so concerned about others' perceptions of our family's well-being. Why does it matter what others think? Shouldn't we focus on what's best for us and ensuring Julie has everything she needs? I argued. Charles suggested we wait longer before I considered going back to work, claiming he was thinking of our best interests, but clearly it was more about his ego and the image he wanted to project. Frustrated, I stood my ground, asserting my right to make decisions about my career and our family's future. I highlighted that I, too, had opinions and desires that mattered. The discussion escalated when Charles hinted at leaving if things didn't go his way, accusing me of not caring about his feelings. I was taken aback. Was he threatening to leave over this? It was clear this wasn't just about me going back to work. It was about his inability to see beyond his ego and truly consider what was best for our family. This confrontation marked a turning point in our relationship, one where I realized the importance of asserting my independence and prioritizing our family's needs over outdated notions of pride. I realized I needed to take drastic steps. If Charles thought threatening me was the only way to get my attention, I had to make it clear that I cared deeply about his feelings. However, I couldn't comprehend why his emotions always took precedence. When you start valuing my feelings, I'll reciprocate, I told him. 
His reaction was extreme, leaving me utterly shocked. After our heated exchange, Charles simply walked away, leaving me alone with my thoughts. He acted as if the conversation never happened, resuming his normal demeanor. In the days that followed, I was seething with anger. Yet it dawned on me that Charles was hardly around. He was oblivious to my daily life and showed no interest in what I did. That's when I decided to restart an old hobby of mine, embroidery, turning it into a small side business. Charles occasionally noticed me embroidering but never inquired further. Gradually, my resentment towards him lessened, but the realization that our marriage was crumbling was undeniable. I was determined not to let Julie experience the aftermath of a divorce as I did, so I persevered. Over the next four years, Charles's involvement with Julie slightly improved, although it was minimal. He would ask about her rather than directly engage, which was frustrating, but it was an improvement from complete neglect. Financially, we were better off, though Charles never questioned the source of the extra income, which irked me. How could he not wonder where the money was coming from? Regardless, I saved most of what I earned and used the rest for our expenses. I was prepared to continue this way until Julie was 19, but everything changed one evening when Charles came home late from work. As usual, I asked him about his day and mentioned Julie, suggesting he spend more time with her to make up for his absence. His response was disheartening. He claimed he couldn't make it because of a significant project at work. This pattern of excuses and disengagement highlighted the ongoing issues in our relationship and the need for a serious re-evaluation of our future together. To motivate his colleagues to complete a project, Charles suggested hosting a dinner at our home as a reward. Curious, I asked if the event would include just his colleagues or their families too. He mentioned it would be an adults-only gathering, inviting just their wives. Concerned about Julie, our daughter, I wondered if we should arrange a babysitter. Charles, however, felt it unnecessary, suggesting we simply put Julie to bed early. When I queried about dressing up for the occasion, Charles's immediate and emphatic no took me by surprise. He explained he wanted a casual dinner to avoid seeming pretentious. Accepting his rationale, I moved on to discuss the dinner preparations, agreeing to pick up ingredients after work the following day. As the dinner approached, I was a bundle of nerves, striving to present our marriage in the best light. To my astonishment, every guest, including Charles, arrived in elegant attire. Charles's earlier advice against dressing up felt like a deliberate oversight, leaving me underdressed and slightly embarrassed. The evening seemed to progress smoothly until a shocking moment unfolded. While serving dinner, one of Charles's colleagues inquired about my identity. Charles, with unsettling ease, introduced me as Julie's nanny. His words felt like a cold shock, igniting a fury within me I had never experienced before. Despite my urge to correct him, I retreated, grappling with feelings of humiliation and betrayal. I spent the evening isolated, overhearing laughter and conversation, the sounds sharpening my sense of indignation and hurt. After the guests departed, Charles casually entered our bedroom, oblivious to the storm of emotions raging within me. His lie not only demeaned me, but also left me questioning the foundation of our relationship. I awaited an explanation, yearning to understand his reasoning for such a demeaning fabrication. I waited for Charles to bring up his earlier comment, but he went about his usual evening routine as if nothing had happened. It wasn't until he was comfortably in bed that he finally noticed my silence and asked if I was upset with him. His obliviousness to the situation was astounding. Are you really asking me that after what you said tonight? I challenged. He seemed genuinely puzzled, wondering aloud what he could have possibly said to upset me. When I confronted him about referring to me as Julie's nanny, his response was dismissive, claiming I should understand why he did it. But I didn't, 
and I demanded an explanation. Charles's justification was shocking. He found it embarrassing to admit I was a stay-at-home mom, fearing it made us look dependent and outdated, especially since the wives of his colleagues were all employed. He argued that my staying at home made us seem less progressive in the eyes of his friends, who respected their own partner's independence and careers. I was flabbergasted. How could my contribution to our family be seen as a sign of weakness or dependency? I reminded him that I manage everything at home by myself, questioning how that could possibly be seen as being dependent on him. Yet Charles insisted that my not earning an income was a source of embarrassment for him, a sentiment that struck me as deeply unfair and contradictory. After all, it had been his idea for me to stay home in the first place. The conversation spiraled into an argument about values and appearances, with Charles asking me to just play along with his narrative for the sake of his reputation. His dismissal of my feelings and his request for me to endorse his lie was the last straw. Frustrated and hurt, I declared that I would indeed play along, but warned him of the potential regret he might feel for making such a request. With that, I took an extra pillow and sought refuge in Julie's room, distancing myself from the situation to find some peace away from Charles's disheartening view of our family dynamic. That night, tears were my only solace as I grappled with the hurt Charles had inflicted. His words echoed, deepening the wound to my self-esteem. It was a moment of stark realization. I couldn't allow this cycle of disrespect to continue, not just for my sake, but for Julie's too. I didn't want her to grow up thinking such treatment was acceptable in any relationship. The following morning, after taking Julie to school, I found myself at a divorce lawyer's office, initiating the separation process. It felt surreal, yet there was a strange sense of relief thinking about a future free from Charles's demeaning attitude. I meticulously compiled all necessary financial documents, including records of my inheritances and investments. With everything laid out clearly, I awaited the divorce papers. Once they were ready, I devised a plan to confront Charles publicly. I arranged a meeting under the guise of a business discussion, inviting Charles and his colleagues, none of whom were aware of the true agenda. As the meeting began, Charles's confusion was evident. I addressed the gathering, intent on clarifying the falsehoods Charles had spread about me being merely a nanny. His attempts to dismiss the situation only fueled my resolve. Revealing a personal account he wasn't aware of, I shocked everyone, especially Charles, by displaying its substantial balance. This dramatic revelation served a dual purpose, to correct his deceitful narrative and to publicly denounce his shallow and disrespectful behavior towards me as his spouse. Charles's feeble attempts at justification fell on deaf ears. His admission of lying out of panic did little to salvage his dignity. I called him out, using his own words against him, highlighting the irony of his claim of my supposed financial dependency. The unfolding drama made it clear. By exposing Charles's hypocrisy, I not only reclaimed my dignity, but also underscored the importance of respect and truth in our relationship. This public confrontation was a decisive step toward ending a marriage that had been marred by superficial judgments and disrespect. In that revealing moment, I laid bare the truth of our situation to everyone present. Charles had diminished my role to just a nanny to avoid facing the embarrassment of admitting that I, his wife, managed all our household responsibilities while he focused solely on his career. This arrangement made him comfortable letting him boast about his financial contribution as if it were the only one that mattered. My declaration that he had made me into a nanny in his colleagues' eyes was the last straw for him. Without waiting for a private discussion, I presented Charles with the divorce papers then and there. Julie and I will be leaving the house by this weekend, I announced, making it clear there was no turning back. His embarrassment at having a wife rather than a partner he could boast about had led us to this point. 
His actions had humiliated me to an irreparable degree, and no amount of talking could change my decision now. With a thank you to his colleagues for their time, I left the room, unwilling to listen to any of Charles's excuses. I hurried to pick up Julie, wanting to escape to a place of safety before facing what I knew would be an unavoidable confrontation with Charles. Back home, I double-checked that everything important was packed, readying myself for his return and the inevitable argument that would follow. I was determined not to let him have any advantage over me. True to expectations, Charles arrived home not long after, anger radiating from him. He demanded to know the reason behind my public denouncement. I calmly explained that it was a clear message to him and everyone else about the value of respect in our relationship, something he had long forgotten. He was more concerned about his tarnished reputation than the well-being of our family. Even in the face of our imminent divorce, Charles's priorities were misplaced, focused solely on how others perceived him rather than the real issues at hand. It was evident that his reputation was his only concern. I had made it clear to him that I was leaving, taking Julie with me, yet all he could worry about was the impact on his social standing. I pointed out the irony of his concern for reputation when he had been living a lie. Despite not working outside the home for years, I had managed to contribute financially to our household, something he never questioned or appreciated. His indifference to everything but his image was the final confirmation that our paths had diverged irreconcilably. With that, I told Charles that he and his reputation could face the future without us. My priority was a healthy environment for Julie and myself, far removed from the toxic dynamics that had defined our marriage. As I stood firm in my decision, it was clear that our journey together had reached its end, and a new chapter awaited Julie and me, one grounded in respect and truth. With everything Julie and I needed already packed, I was ready to leave. Charles's threat to not let us go easily and to fight for custody in court didn't intimidate me. I calmly informed him that I had accumulated four years of documentation highlighting his absence as a parent. Despite his insistence on fighting, I was confident in my stance that Julie would stay with me. Charles accused me of trying to ruin his life over a single comment, but I clarified that his remark was merely the tipping point. His continuous mistreatment and disregard had been ongoing, and his disparaging comment at the dinner was a revelation of how little he valued me. His accusation of me going overboard didn't waver my resolve. I pointed out the irony in his feeling humiliated for just a moment compared to the years of disregard I endured. As Charles lashed out, calling me insane and suggesting I needed to check my mental state, I recognized it for what it was, his inability to confront the truth. I advised him to use this as an opportunity for self-reflection and personal growth, hoping he might understand the depth of his actions. Leaving Charles with a final remark on how enduring his insults for years made his current situation a minor inconvenience in comparison I prepared to leave with Julie. Though securing our departure felt like a victory in standing up to Charles, it was bittersweet. The dissolution of our family wasn't something I had wanted, and despite knowing I wasn't to blame, the weight of the situation was heavy on my heart. Julie, on the other hand, seemed largely unaffected by the upheaval. Given her limited interactions with Charles due to his frequent absence, this change in our lives didn't disrupt her as much as one might expect. As we left, I was filled with a mix of relief and sadness, hopeful for a new beginning, yet mourning the family structure we could never quite achieve. For Julie, Charles had become just another person sharing our living space, not someone integral to her daily life. Her evident joy at the prospect of it being just the two of us moving forward was heartening. 
We settled into a new condo that I had purchased, and Julie's excitement over her new room was infectious. This move represented more than just a change of scenery for me. It was the beginning of a new chapter, free from the shadow of a controlling spouse. Securing a new job came easier than expected, largely due to the unexpected support from some of Charles's former colleagues. After the incident, they reached out with offers of help, enabling me to land interviews with prestigious companies. Meanwhile, Charles faced professional isolation. His colleagues distanced themselves, leading to his eventual resignation from a stagnating career at his company. The divorce proceedings were intense, with Charles fighting for custody of Julie. However, armed with undeniable evidence of his lack of involvement and Julie's wishes to stay with me, the court's decision was straightforward. The judge advised Charles to appreciate that I sought only full custody, sparing him further claims. I chose not to pursue any of his assets or wealth, wanting nothing more than to sever our ties completely and start anew on my terms. It's been a year since those tumultuous times, and looking back, I sometimes find myself reflecting on everything that transpired, especially the moment of Charles's public reckoning. Despite the challenges, the memory brings a sense of triumph and a smile to my face, affirming my decision to pursue a happier, more fulfilling life for Julie and myself.